And uh, with that, I will transition into Glenn now because what he's going to share with us tonight is, is more the technical side. You know, what, what these products, from a product standpoint, what they really can do and the science behind them. You know, we were in Sydney last night, and I think you'll find this very curious. Glenn has the ability to talk in a way that actually makes sense. Who remembers being in science class and being a little bit like, Whoosh. anybody? I was there. Um, so I think you're going to find that Glenn has the ability to really to teach things in a way that make a lot of sense. And uh, you know, I've known Glenn for a lot of years. We've traveled all over the different uh, in the U.S. and Canada together prior to this assignment. And I'm really excited that he's uh, taken the time to be with us today. He's a good friend of mine, a great friend of Newskin and all of ours. So please help me welcome Mr. Glenn Cheney. because I was afraid it was going to rip at the seams. Well, um, I'm glad to be here to talk to you about the science behind the age lock products. And I, I'm passionate about the science that we have developed at, at New Skin and Pharmanex. And I want to make sure that you go home understanding what makes these products different from other products that are already available on the market. As you go around uh, sharing the opportunity uh, sharing the products, people are going to say, well, can't I just go to the store and buy something like this? And we really are doing something quite different. How many of you have seen this diagram before? Yeah, we, we've been showing this for years. And um, it actually took me a while to, to catch on to what we were trying to convey with this particular diagram. Um, for decades, companies have been trying to target the signs and the symptoms of aging. So if you've got a wrinkle, hey, we can, we can make a product that helps you know, to, to treat that sign or that symptom. But no one was ever really getting at the true sources of aging. So when we talk about sources, what are we talking about? And this is where you can shout it out. I want a little bit of interaction here. Yeah, genes, okay. So we, genes are responsible for the visual... Uh, our visual appearance, right? I have blue eyes, someone down here has brown eyes. The reason is we have, we've got a different gene that, that codes for blue eyes and brown eyes. That makes sense. We, we have these visual differences because we have different genes. So this is where you might feel like you're back in science class, and I apologize for those of you who didn't like that feeling. Um, what percentage of DNA do you think is shared across all cultures and ethnicities? All right? so, so in other words, how much is common between all of these individuals? Uh, I think I heard 25. 95. 95. Okay. I thought, I thought uh, genes were responsible for our visual characteristics. Do these guys look like they're 95% the same? 100%? 100% the same? Okay. Well, that, that's quite the, the, the range. We've got 25%, 100% the same. Um, well, the number happens to be uh, more than 99% is the same DNA. So here's my question for you, and it's really kind of the foundation for understanding what we're doing with age lock science. How is it possible, if genes are responsible for our visual characteristics, how is it possible that people can have 99% the same DNA but look so different? And the answer is a term that I want to make sure that you go home understanding very well, because if you don't understand this term, then I've done a poor job. It's gene expression. We might share more than 99% the same genetics, but the way those genes express themselves is what's different. And I, I don't expect you to understand the term gene expression just yet, but in a few minutes you are going to understand it. Anyone recognize this gentleman? Yeah. This is Joe Chang. This is my boss's boss, okay? Uh, he's not this young anymore. This is him. Uh, well, at age eight, and then I'm not sure exactly how old, how old Joe is. 60-something, uh, I'm not sure. Anyone know his age? He's 59, okay. Um, so... You have the same DNA today as you had on day number one, right? But you look different. 
So if genes are responsible for our visual characteristics, why do you look different? The answer is gene expression. Okay, don't worry if you don't understand what that means just yet. I just want you to understand that gene expression is responsible for the differences that we see in between people and within the same individual as we age. But because I'm going to go into some scientific details that might be a little complex, I want to make sure that if there's nothing else you understand, if there's nothing else you, you take away, it's this slide. Um, I'd like to compare the human genome to a symphony. So in the same way that in the human genome we've got thousands of different genes, and each gene does something different, that's a little bit like a symphony, right? You have many different uh, uh, instruments that are making their own music, and when you put all of those instruments together in their expression, you get a beautiful symphony, right? So our genes, they express themselves to make the symphony that is you, and the way they, they express that is uniquely you, right? Well, as we age, our genetic symphony becomes uh, out of tune. And it's the same instruments, it's the same genes, but all of a sudden they're playing themselves, they're, they're expressing themselves differently. And that is the genetic explanation of aging. And so with age lock science, what we're doing is we're retuning your genetic symphony. That's a pretty simple, duplicatable explanation. Would you agree? You don't have to be a scientist to understand it. And uh, we, we certainly never want anyone to feel like they need to be a scientist to explain this business. We want to do the science for you so that you can go out and build the business, all right? So if you don't remember anything else, I just want you to think about a genetic symphony and that it gets out of, out of tune and age lock science is going to retune that. Well, enough with the simple stuff. Let's get into the gory details. That's kind of gory right there. What is it? A cell, okay. What's at the very center of my cell? I've got a nucleus with chromosomes in them, those X-like structures, and we can take one of those and pull it out, and we can stretch it out. Well, um, different segments, as you unravel a chromosome and you look at the DNA, if you want to take individual segments, uh, those individual segments are known as genes. And genes might be different lengths, uh, but they each are the recipe for a different building block that makes up you. Uh, anyone know how many genes are in the human genome? Somewhere between 20 and 25,000 genes. Scientists aren't exactly sure. It takes a long time to count them, by the way. Um, well, each of those 20 to 25,000 genes is a recipe for a different protein. So let's take uh, my purple one right there. It is the recipe, and when that recipe is actually made, so think of a recipe back at home in your, uh, in your pantry, you pull out that recipe card, when you make it, that's your product, right? You've got the recipe, you've got the product. Same thing happens with the gene. You've got the recipe, that's the gene, the product is a protein. And these 20 to 25,000 different genes can actually produce proteins that combine in different ways to make upwards of 300,000 different proteins that can be used in doing different things in your body. Well, so this gene right here that I'm showing you is being expressed. When it's expressed, it makes its protein. We could take another gene, and it's a totally different gene. It makes a different product, but it can also be expressed at a different level. So the gene on, uh, uh, on the left is being expressed at a low level, and the gene on the right is being expressed at a higher level. Is this term gene expression starting to make a little bit of sense? Okay. So, uh, now I want you to understand how gene expression is an issue that uh, plays into the aging process. So I've got gene 1 and gene 2, and both of these genes are, are how they're being expressed when you're young. Okay. So I've got gene 1, youthful gene expression of gene 1, it expresses itself at a relatively low level. Gene expression, youthful gene expression of gene 2 is higher than gene 1. Now, is it better to have low gene expression or high gene expression? It depends. You guys don't even need me to come here and explain this. You know the answers already, right? It's not that you want low gene expression or high gene expression. It's you want the gene expression pattern that you had when you were younger. And to make this a little more real life, let's say that gene 1, well, I'm going to start with gene 2. Uh, uh, let's say gene 2 is collagen. Anyone know what, anyone know what collagen is? What's collagen? 
That's scaffolding for your skin. It's a protein that gives structure to your skin. And the more collagen you have, the more youthful your skin is. So that would make sense if gene 2 happens to be the gene that encodes for collagen. Uh, anyway, I won't go into the details. Uh, uh, you want to have lots of that, that collagen produced when you're young, right? Well, let's say that gene 2 is collagenase. Any guesses on what collagenase would be? It happens to be an enzyme that breaks collagen down. Well, you have to have a little bit of uh, collagenase because your body needs to turn molecules over. But this pattern of having lots of collagen, a small amount of collagenase, would be a good recipe for youthful skin, right? You're going to have lots of the collagen, a low amount of the collagenase, and so your, your skin is going to have lots of collagen. Well, let's take these same two genes and look what happens to their expression as we get older. The genes are identical. Nothing's changed with the gene. The recipe is, is exactly the same as it was. But now, through the aging process, the expression changes. Gene 1 is now expressing at a higher level, more collagenase, more breaking down of the collagen stuff that gives your skin that nice structure. And then gene 2, uh, the gene that encodes for collagen, it's being expressed at a lower level. So do you see how this shift in gene expression really can drive some changes that uh, bring about visual appearances of aging? Yeah. Well, it's not a science unless you can measure it. And so geneticists are very interested in understanding how gene expression changes with the aging process. And so they've come up with this uh, color scheme, this color range, and they like to, to uh, use the greens are representative of low gene expression, and reds are representative of high gene expression. So you can see that my gene one, when, uh, when we were young, it's being expressed somewhere in the green range, and then as we age and that, that particular gene is being expressed at a higher level, it's uh, associated with the color red, and vice versa for gene 2. Well, the reason that's important is because things get kind of uh, complex when you start to look at 20 to 25,000 genes all at the same time. And so you need a very quick way of being able to identify, well, what's happening with this gene? Has, has gene expression gone up or has gene expression gone down? Because what we're trying to do is identify the pattern of expression when the individuals were young and find methods of reestablishing or resetting that gene expression back to what it was when we were younger. So, um, well, um, really, everything changed for us when we became introduced to this team of scientists. Uh, this is uh, on the uh, right hand side Richard Weinrich in the middle, Thomas Prola, and then Jamie Barger. Uh, these are the scientists of LifeGen Technologies. And they are the world's foremost knowledgeable on the genetic expression aspects of aging. No one understands aging at the genetic level better than these gentlemen. And about seven years ago, uh, we were in a very important meeting, uh, some of the scientists at, at New Skin. We had flown in some of our uh, scientific advisory board me members from around the world, and we were chatting about the future of what we were going to do to develop some innovative products. If we can't make innovative products, you don't have a compelling business opportunity. If we're just going to make the same stuff that our competitors are, are going to make, then uh, it, it's, it's more difficult for you. So we're very uh, committed to making compelling products. Well, in this particular meeting, uh, somewhere about halfway through the day, Joe Chang pokes his head in, and he asked for a brief summary of what we had accomplished so far. And we told him some of the ideas, and he thought, okay, well, that's... Sounds okay, but not as exciting as I was looking for. And he got up to leave. He got to the door. He turned around and he turned to my boss, Mark Bartlett. And he says, hey, Mark, did you read that paper by uh, Richard Weindrick that came out just this last week? And Mark said, yeah, that was really good. And Joe said, we need to get him and his team in here to talk to us, because I think we've got a, a real opportunity to, uh, for some collaboration. Uh, so we did. Uh, that was the very first time I ever heard Joe talk about it. That was the very first time that we uh, really started to move the direction of looking at gene expression as a method of making anti-aging products. And uh, a few weeks later, actually, we had this team of scientists in at our, our corporate headquarters. And uh, it was an all-day long meeting, a giant table with like 25 scientists sitting around it. And you could feel the energy just kind of building up in the room. Um, well, we've made a fantastic collaboration with LifeGen Technologies. In fact, now we've, we've acquired them as an official part of the New Skin business. 
They work for you now. We are, we are a team of scientists that are committed to making products that provide a compelling business opportunity for you. Well, um, the thing that LifeGen technology does that is so different from the competition, there's other people out there who are looking at gene expression. But when they look at gene expression, they're really looking at one or two genes. That's really all they're, they're, they're interested in. When you have 20 to 25,000 different genes to take a look at, it's really difficult to say, well, I'm going to start with this one, or I'm going to start with this one. And so most companies who are looking at gene expression uh, are really just looking at one or two because the information is so overwhelming. And this is what, what LifeGen technology does is so different. They look at groups of genes. So uh, we already talked about the fact that genes can change in their expression levels as we grow older. So if the aging response causes some genes to express at higher levels or other genes to express at lower levels through the age uh, compared to when we were younger, what we're trying to do with uh, with age lock science is to oppose that change. If there was some gene that in our, our youth expressed at low levels, but through age it started to increase its uh, expression, we want to oppose it right back to the level of expression that it was when you were younger. Because what do you get when you get your genes to express themselves the way that you did when you were younger? You get a younger you, is what you get. Remember that picture of Joe Chang when he was 8 and Joe Chang when he was 59? The difference is, is in the way your genes express. If you can get genes to express the same way that they express themselves when you were younger, you get a younger you. How many of you would uh, not be so opposed to having a younger you again, right? As long as you can keep all the wisdom that you've gained, right? Not such a bad thing. So that's what we're doing with aids off technology is we're identifying the genes that change with age related to a certain function, and then we go out and we start looking for ingredients that have the ability to oppose those changes. So, uh, very exciting. Now, remember I showed you how the colors, the, the, the green is associated with low expression and red is associated with high expression. So, better to have green or red? It depends. Someone fell for my trick there. I heard someone say green, someone say red. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not that red is better or green is better. You want the expression level profile that you had when you were young. And so, you see, uh, this is what we call a heat map. Um, I don't know why they call it a heat map, because there's really no heat involved, but it's referred to as a heat map. And if you were to count the rows that go down there, you'd find that there's 52 rows. Those 52 rows are representative of 52 different genes. Now this happens to be 52 genes that are related to cellular energy. There happens to be more than 1,200 genes related to cellular energy, but only 52 of them actually change in the aging process. So it's not as though uh, gene expression is changing on every single gene. There are certain genes that change in their expression. And so our first step is we identify which genes are changing with the aging process. Bam, that's the difference right there. Young gene expression of those 52 genes, old gene expression. And you can see that in the young individuals, you've got, uh, you've got those top 30 or so that are being expressed at low levels, the top 20 or so that are being expressed at high levels. And the reason we selected those 52 genes is because when you compare it to the old individuals, those genes are the genes that change in their expression levels. The ones that were green when you were young, now they're red. The ones that were red, now they're green. We want to get your gene, your gene expression pattern back the way that it was when it was young. Um, and that's the whole idea. And so we spend a, a great deal of time really looking at these heat maps, as they're called, these uh, gene expression profile maps. Well, it's really a very exciting science. Uh, a decade ago, even after the human genome had been entirely uh, decoded, People didn't know what to do with all that information. And this particular scientific method allows us to make sense of the human genome to figure out what changes are interesting to the aging problem. And uh, so we've patented this technology. There's uh, over 18 patents filed or pending. We've got eight articles that have been published in peer-reviewed journals, so very well respected in the scientific community. Uh, presentations and scientific posters around the world and awards have been won for this. But I would say the most important thing on this slide for you guys to understand is it's patented. 
That means that no one else can duplicate what we're doing. And when no one else can copy us, it gives you a unique business opportunity, the confidence to go out and share with your friends, your family, your acquaintances, that we have something that other people cannot copy. Because if someone else can copy it, you know, you could start building your business and then someone else does something and pull, pulls everyone away. Because this is patented, it's going to allow you the confidence to build without the fear that it's going to be taken away from you. Well, this technology of identifying genes that change the aging process, then targeting those particular genes with ingredients, has led to the formulation of um, upwards of a dozen different products. And uh, we continue to use this methodology to make other products. I'll just mention some of them here. Um, on the left-hand side of the slide, you've got um, body shaping gel and uh, dramatic effects, along with the body, uh, the body spa. Uh, those products are really targeting body contour and shape, really looking at the cellulite problem. <clears throat> then we've got, <clears throat> we've got age lock transformation. It's the system in the center there. There are four different products. We've got a future serum, a cleanse and tone, a day moisturizer, and a night moisturizer. We've also got the, uh, the face spa with those gels. You'll see them in the, the little blue, uh, little blue, Vials, is that what they're called? Um, and then we've introduced uh, age lock on the inside. That's taking these ingredients and really going inside with different uh, herbal extracts that have the ability to target genes and reset their gene expression back to the way that it was uh, when you were younger. This last product I'll talk a little bit about. It's, True Fa it's Age Lock True Face Essence Ultra. An amazing product. If you were going to start with one product, I would probably recommend this one. If you want to see some visual changes in, in your skin, on your face, that's going to be an excellent one. And we'll go into a little more detail. Let's take a look, a deep look, at skin. What's happening with aging versus young skin? Anyone want to guess which one is the young one? <laughs> okay. So, um, if you go underneath the epidermis, if you look under there, you've got all, this, all these structural components. Uh, this is the collagen and the elastin that really gives shape to your skin. And as we age, as I already showed you, gene expression changes. You're not making as much of that collagen. You're making more of that collagenase. You're not making as much of the elastin. Well, when you're not making all the stuff that supports the epidermis, what's going to happen to the epidermis underneath? It's going to collapse down. It's going to fall in. And that's one of the reasons that you've uh, developed wrinkles. Uh, other aspects of aging skin is you get these dark circles, uh, well, dark circles, you get these uh, pigmentation, uh, overproduction of melanin. Well, as we wanted to identify different characteristics of a uh, aging skin so that we could figure out what genes we wanted to take a look at, we identified um, genes related to skin structure, so a, a lot of things that are related to fine lines and wrinkles. We identified genes that are related to cell turnover, the rate at which Old cells fall off and new skin, new skin cells are replacing. That's going to impact pore size, skin brilliance and radiance and smoothness of skin, the texture. Um, as we grow older, our skin isn't quite as smooth as it was when we were younger. Another aspect is that pigmentation I was talking about. So you get that uneven skin tone, that discoloration and age spots. And then lastly, hydration. As we grow older, our skin actually becomes drier. And so we were looking for genes related to these four different aspects of youthful skin. Well, that's youthful skin, if I've ever seen it. This is a young model. And um, this kind of takes all that academic approach and kind of turns it into something that I think we can all really uh, identify with. If a young model takes her skin and scrunches it up, what's going to happen when she lets go? Snaps right back, right? And the reason is, is because her skin is full of collagen and elastin. Well, uh, we've already talked about the fact that this changes with the aging process. You don't have so much of that collagen and elastin, right? So we've got this great contour, this great skin firmness when we're young, but not so much when we're older, right? She scrunched up her face a couple months ago, and it hasn't quite <laughs> So she loses that skin firmness and that contour, 
and the skin literally starts to hang off of the bones of your face. Um, and it's because you're losing that, those, those molecules that provide the skin structure. Well, uh, it, it, it's in part due to this molecule, elastin. Elastin, just like a, an elastic band, a rubber band, elastin is a molecule that allows you to pull your skin and it snaps right back into place. But because we produce less of it as we grow older, we start to lose that elastic characteristic of our skin. And that's where uh, we have to go a little bit deeper. So we've talked about the visual level of skin, the cellular level of skin. And with the age lock methodology, we want to look at the gene expression level of skin. We want to understand what's happening with the genes that are associated with skin structure, hydration, pigmentation, uh, and cell turnover. We want to understand what's happening with gene expression because it's the, they're the exact same genes. Nothing's changing. We're not mutating genes. But as we grow older, they express in a different way and we get less of a certain compound that we'd actually really like to have more of and more of compounds that we'd like to have less of. So uh, with True Face, uh, Age Lock True Face Essence Ultra, we've really targeted this problem by targeting some genes that are associated with those compounds, those key elements that help to produce more elastin in your skin. And that helps to restore the youthfulness and the resilience of your skin. You, it, it, it brings back the contour and the firmness of your skin so that you're going to have much more youthful skin. And that's probably best seen around the eyes because where's the first place you see wrinkles forming? Yeah, it, it starts right here with the crow's feet. And uh, so this True Face Essence Ultra with age lock technology is going to help to restore the firmness all around the face, but especially around the eyes, the jawline, the chin. You'll see an improvement in those areas. Well, um, I spend most of my time actually working on our dietary supplements. That's my passion. And uh, we've used this age lock technology to develop a product known as age lock R squared. Now, how many of you have tried this product? Keep your hands up. Put your hand down if you don't love it. Someone put their hand down. I'm not sure if they were just tired of having it. All right. I'm sure everybody loves it. But um, here we're using, we're, 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 again, we're targeting genes that are related to two related functions. So we've got two different products that come together in this age lock R squared. You've got the R squared day and the R squared night. The R squared day is targeting cellular energy levels. R squared night is targeting cellular purification. And I want you to understand why it is that these two products work so well together. Why is it that we couldn't mix all these ingredients into just one product and say, you know, here, here's a great product for you. Why is it that we kept them separate? What are they doing that's different? When we talk about toxins, oftentimes people immediately assume that we're talking about uh, environmental to toxins. You live in a city, you're exposed to the toxins, the fumes from vehicles and cars and uh, some of the pollution of the city. Now that's environmental toxin. But there's another kind of toxins that our bodies produce. Every day you and I produce toxins as a byproduct of living. It's, uh, there's no way around it unless you want to die. Uh, as long as you're alive, you're producing toxins at the same time. But when we're young, our bodies have these cellular purification systems that exceed the load of, of toxins that we're being exposed to from the environment as well as the toxins that we're producing internally. And so if you look here in my graph, I've got uh, the external toxic load. That's what's coming from the city around us, from the cars that we're walking around. But this internal toxic load is what we're producing. But as long as our cellular purification system can handle both of those put together, not a problem. Our cells make some garbage. Our purification systems take the garbage out on a daily basis. Well, as we age, because genes related to the cellular purification mechanism change, all of a sudden, even though the environmental toxins don't change, we're still exposed to the same amount that we were, unless we've moved from the city to the farm or the farm to the city. In general, we've got about the same amount of toxic exposure coming from the environment. But what does change is our ability to clear those toxins out of our cell every single day, the toxins that we make, the toxins we're exposed to, we're not clearing them out rapidly enough. And so you start to accumulate more and more toxins. And it reminds me of my kitchen sink. This is not a picture of my kitchen sink. I just found this on the internet. 
but sometimes my kitchen sink looks like this. <laughs> really? Um, think about what you can do in your kitchen. You can be so productive in your kitchen. You can go to the grocery store, you can bring home your groceries, you can organize them, you can get them all put away, you can prepare a meal, all sorts of things can be done in your kitchen. But when your kitchen starts to look like this, when the kitchen sink is full, where do the, the, sink, the, the dirty dishes start to go after that? Yeah, they start to go on the, 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 the counter. Pretty soon, the productivity of your kitchen drops to zero because you can't do anything. All the dishes are everywhere. You can't do anything. And your cells actually work in much the same way. If you start to accumulate lots of junk in your cells because you're not clearing them out, your cellular purification mechanisms aren't working properly, your cells start to accumulate all that junk. Well, what do you think that does to the, the productivity of your cells? Totally takes a dive. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a brain cell or a muscle cell. Those cells do different things, but they don't work as well. So does that make a little sense why all of a sudden if we're accumulating all sorts of uh, toxins in our brain, some, uh, all of a sudden we don't think as clearly, those cells aren't going to work as well. Uh, or in a muscle cell, if we start to accumulate some of this junk, well, maybe we're not going to have as much energy. So the whole idea is to make sure that your cellular environment is clean so that your cells can be productive. They can do the things that they were intended to do. Well, here we are back where we started. Uh, what did we say was at the center of this? That, that, uh, what are these sources of aging? Yeah, that's genes. And I want you to understand that as we identify different groups of uh, functionally related genes, these are two different groups that we identified. Cellular energy and cellular purification. We found genes that were related to the cellular processes that really drive these two different aspects of a healthy, youthful cell. And when those two different uh, sets of genes, we refer to them as youth gene clusters. So when you've got a youth gene cluster that's responsible for cellular energy, and when that youth gene cluster is being expressed in youthful ways, you get cellular, uh, you get youthful energy. When your cellular, cellular purification youth gene cluster is expressing itself in a pattern, the same pattern that you had when you were young, your cells are going to clean themselves out and you're going to help to support that productive cellular environment. Um, and so it's probably no surprise that when the cellular energy youth gene cluster is being expressed in the right way, it's going to support this feeling of being recharged. And when the cellular purification youth gene cluster is being expressed in youthful ways, it's going to support this feeling of being renewed. But what I want you to understand is how these are two mutually reinforcing youth gene clusters. So why did we put these two different products together? And it's because these two different youth gene clusters really work together. So imagine, uh, this is going to be my youthful cycle. When my cell is making ample energy, that energy is used to drive everything that cell does. So if it's a muscle cell, it helps it to contract. If it's a brain cell, it helps it to send electrical impulses. But every cell has to use energy to uh, clean up the environment. The, the cellular purification mechanisms, they really depend on the energy. You can't plug in your vacuum cleaner and clean up your house if you don't have energy to do it, right? A cell is the same way. If you don't have cellular energy being produced, there's not enough energy to drive the cellular purification mechanisms. So once you start making that energy, there's enough energy to drive the purification mechanisms which means it cleans up the cellular environment so it doesn't get all cluttered, which means that it's easier to make cellular, cellular energy. Do you see that it's a positive upward spiral? As you make more energy, there's more cellular cleaning that's going on, which makes it easier for your cell to function in making energy and doing everything else it's supposed to do. Well, that certainly leads to an increased feeling of being recharged and renewed, but as we age, the cycle really kind of changes. So all of a sudden, we're not making enough energy. And so when there's not enough energy, there's not enough energy to clean the cell very well. So the cell starts to accumulate junk. And it starts to look like that kitchen sink does, where it's not clean, it can't really be as productive as it would like to be. And so what happens is the feeling of being recharged and renewed <coughs> diminishes, and you start to get those signs and symptoms of aging. Well, what are going to be the signs and symptoms of reduced cellular energy? then yeah, you're going to feel tired. If every cell isn't making enough, if every cell in your body is not making ample energy, 
it's going to have a, um, a repercussion on the way that you feel. If your cells aren't purifying, uh, that's going to play into the entire problem. So with AIDS lock, we're really trying to restore that youthful cycle by making ample energy to support the cellular purification mechanisms so that you'll have enough energy. You got that positive upward spiral once again. So those of you who are using it, would you agree that you feel recharged and renewed? Yeah. And it's because we've used this, this gene expression approach of identifying genes related to cellular energy, genes related to cellular purification. Well, um, it looks like more than half the room already knows this. You're supposed to take six capsules of the R squared day in the morning, two of them in the evening, uh, to support the processes that really happen at different times. You can imagine when you were younger, I mean, you didn't need a product to, to actually take right before you went to bed. But the natural process of cleaning out the junk in our cells, it happens while we're asleep. That's why we wake up feeling so refreshed and renewed. It's because those cellular processes really kind of turn on during the night. So we make the junk during the day, our cells clean them out at night. And we're trying to really support the body's own process of cleaning out the cells at nighttime. Well, this, this age lock science is really unique. It allows us to make products that are unparalleled, uncomparable to other products on the market. Wouldn't it be cool, though, if we took this scientific method of formulating products and took it to the obesity problem? That would be a very compelling problem, uh, a very compelling product. Um, and so that's what we've done with AgeLock TR90. And I thought it would be fun to kind of explain a little bit of the, the research that we've kind of started with TR90 so that you can get ready. We want to make sure that uh, come October at the convention, when we have this limited time offer, when you can get the product, that you already understand the product. You can already start promoting it. So, what do we all, what's the first step of any uh, age lock product? What's the first thing we have to do? Yeah, we've got to identify the genes that change in their expression. So, as we started looking, uh, we knew that there were three different tissues that we were going to be interested in. We were going to be interested in uh, certain types of brain tissue. Brain tissue uh, is going to play into the, the aspect of mood and appetite. We want to know how those changes in gene expression play into appetite. Also, lean muscle mass. A huge, this is probably, I would say, the center of the entire program, is the way that genes express in lean muscle mass. Because lean muscle mass um, is really your, your metabolic engine. That's where you're burning your calories. Uh, compared to other tissues in the body, muscle burns more calories than anything else. And so understanding changes uh, in supporting lean muscle mass. And finally, of, and of course, adipose or fat tissue. We wanted to understand how certain genes were expressing. So these three different areas are where we've identified different groups of genes that are related to the weight loss problem. Now the program altogether, it's more than just products. There's an eating plan. We want people to engage in, in exercise. Uh, the whole idea that there's some magic pill out there that you can just take and lose weight, it's not one that, uh, that we want to support. We want people to change their lifestyle. And one of our most important findings, as we've been researching this problem now, is that you can get genes to express in the way that they did when they were younger, but if you're not providing the right building blocks to your diet, the food that you're consuming, it's not going to make any difference. And so what we've come up with are products that are going to work together with the diet that we're promoting. And so we have a very specific TR90 eating plan that is different from other eating plans that we've put together, different from other eating plans that have been uh, promoted by other, other companies. And so make sure that you follow the eating plan along with this. And then, of course, exercise. We want you to just increase your activity level. But there's some, some major shifts, some, some differences that we've discovered as we've uh, come into understanding how gene expression plays in to this weight loss problem. And for decades, people have really thought that it's all about calories in, calories out. So if I eat a hamburger that is 500 calories, I've got to go burn 500 calories to compensate for that. Well, it's really not that simple. Things are a, a bit different and more complex than you would have thought. Um, it really matters what those calories are made of. So I can give someone the, the same number of calories. I can get two people that have the same body composition, 
the same height, the same weight, everything. I can give two people the same number of calories, but the spread of those calories, depending on whether they're coming from the macronutrients, a fat, protein, um, uh, or let's see, I'm missing one. <laughs> So fats, proteins, carbohydrates, thank you. I did just get on a plane yesterday, by the way. Um, depending on the, the ratio that you're getting of those different macronutrients will totally change the way your body's able to handle them. So it's not as simple as a simple mathematical formula of calories in, calories out. It also has to do where those calories are coming from. That's a major finding that we've come into. And it's also not just about the number on the bathroom scale. Everyone wants to see that number go, go down. My question is, who cares how much gravity is pulling you to the surface of the planet? Wouldn't, would you care how much you weighed if you had that perfect model body? Nobody cares how much gravity pulls them to the surface of the planet. What we care about is our, our body shape, what we look like, how we feel. And that's really one thing that we want people to look at when they're on the TR90 program. Because Muscle weighs more than, yeah, right. And what happens uh, with, as far as aging goes, our bodies lose a lot of muscle mass as we grow, eight, uh, as we grow older. In fact, once we hit, we peak our muscle mass somewhere in our 20s or early 30s, all right? That's when we reach our peak muscle mass. How many of you would be willing to go back to your body form when you were 20 years old? Right? Okay, a lot of hands went up, right? Muscle gives us that nice, youthful form. When we have muscle on our body, it gives us that youthful form. I'm not talking about turning us into Arnold Schwarzenegger or anything. We just want to get youthful levels of muscle back on the body. But once we hit age 40, we start to lose about 1% of our muscle mass per year, about 8% over a decade. Well, that really plays into the whole weight gain problem because muscle has the highest metabolic rate of any tissue in the body, as you lose muscle mass, what's happening to your metabolism? Yeah. Is it easier to gain weight at today's age than it was a decade ago? It's because you're losing your metabolic engine as you lose that muscle mass. And so TR90 is really uh, targeting, it's really trying to aim at the gain, or at least protecting against the loss of muscle mass. And so when I say that it's more than just the number on the scale, there's going to be a lot of changes that are happening to people as they're on this system. They might be preserving and even gaining some of that muscle mass, and that's going to make it so that the number on the scale doesn't change so fast. But who cares as long as you start to get the body form that you're looking for, right? Well, uh, so we're, we're losing uh, the muscle mass uh, over, over the decades of our life. So we peak you know, somewhere around 30 or, or so. Muscle mass remains constant until about 40. Then we start losing it, and because we're losing it, that will lead to the gain of fat, because m muscle is actually the metabolic engine we're going to gain at least, these are very conservative numbers by the way, we're going to gain somewhere at least around 5 kilos of fat. That's just due to the aging process, but the, it, it's actually a little more complex than just aging, we'll get to that in a second. But age lock is more than just a number on the scale. It's about a transformation and the way that you're, the silhouette of your body looks. Because we're looking at just losing fat. We don't want you to lose muscle. Um, and we want you to actually maintain the muscle that you've got and perhaps even gain a little bit of muscle. So that's going to lead to a healthier, leaner you. So we've talked about the, the age-related aspect of losing muscle. But then there's another aspect of losing muscle that plays into dieting. When you take a look at traditional dieting programs, they really drive the loss of muscle. You don't want to lose muscle. So let's say we have two individuals that have the exact same uh, body composition, the same amount of, uh, of fat tissue, the same amount of muscle tissue. But we're going to put both of them on a different weight loss eating plan. So in the tradition, traditional program, people will just reduce their calories. They reduce their calories, their body actually goes to their own body, to, to eat their own body, essentially. It goes to the fat tissue, starts eating away at that, but it also goes to the muscle tissue and starts to eat away at that. So age starts to uh, eat away at our muscle, but also dieting starts to eat away at our muscle. This is actually at the root of the problem of uh, the yo-yo diet. When people go on the yo-yo diet, 
They eat fewer calories, so their body compensates by getting those calories from here and here, but also from our muscles. And as we reduce in our muscle mass, uh, we reduce our metabolism. What's that going to do at the end of, of such a diet that caused muscle loss? Easier to gain it back. So if someone goes back on the yo-yo diet, they reduce their calories, the body starts eating away at the fat and the muscle again, and what do they regain back? Do they regain the muscle? No, they only regain the fat back. So the scale is saying the exact same thing, right? It says, oh, I still weigh 70 kilos. Well, I'm going to go on my diet again. They lose the muscle and the fat, they gain the fat back. Oh, now it says I'm 70 kilos again. And each time, each cycle they do that, they're losing more and more muscle mass and gaining back only fat. So uh, you've got aging aspects that play into the weight loss problem, but then you've also got people who are trying to do something that's good, but they're actually doing something that in the long term isn't good for them. This is another reason that I, I don't want you to worry so much about the number on the scale. It's one thing, you can look at it, but I want you to pay more attention to the way that you look and feel. Well, in a healthy weight management system, you're only losing fat. So traditional weight management, People are going to burn less at the end of that. Long term, it's going to be harder to keep the weight off. In a healthy weight management system, you're going to boost the amount of calories you're going to be able to burn. In fact, for every two kilos of muscle you're able to maintain or gain, those two kilos of muscle over a year's time will burn 2.5 kilos of fat while you're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. That's a resting metabolic rate. So important to preserve your lean muscle mass. Well, um, I mentioned to you already that the supplements have to work together with the eating plan. Um, there's certain uh, gene expression that comes out of the diet that we just wouldn't be able to bring about with a supplement alone. So make sure you follow the eating plan. These details will be coming to you. But among them is making sure that you get protein in each of your three meals throughout the day. Did you know most people, well, they, they, they get plenty of protein in most... Uh, uh, industrialized countries, but most people eat at least 90% of their protein in their evening meal. We don't eat protein in our breakfast, sometimes we don't get it in our lunch. We get all of it in our evening meal. But if you sit, take that same amount of protein and cut it into three equal portions and spread it throughout the day, it actually brings about gene expression that supports uh, uh, lean muscle. Is that a hand for a question? If it did, what? No, it's not. Okay, so uh, does it produce ketones? Um, and to produce ketones, you have to reduce uh, the amount of, of carbohydrates to a certain level. And we want people to get lots of fruits and vegetables. There'll be plenty of carbohydrates coming from fruits and vegetables. So it is not a ketogenic diet. Uh, works in a different mechanism. It's working by gene expression, not by turning the, body, uh, the body's ability to burn uh, carbohydrates off. Those are very common. We're doing something that's very different. So you're, you're getting your, your 30 grams of protein per meal. You're still getting carbohydrates. You just want to get the right kinds of carbohydrates. But you want to stay away from refined carbohydrates because those refined carbohydrates will really turn on mechanisms in the body that store fat very effectively. And you don't want to store fat very effectively. So, so far, uh, what we've done is we've certainly looked at the gene profiles of uh, tissues, uh, of fat tissue, brain tissue, um, and muscle tissue. We've looked at genes that are related to nutrient sensing, understanding um, the way the body is able to detect whether it's really hungry, whether it really needs additional calories, or whether it's not uh, hungry, it's, it's just creating appetite for other reasons. But participants in our 90-day study they have lost 15 to 25 percent of body fat. And this is important. They did not lose muscle mass. Um, they were losing just body fat. All of the weight was coming from fat. And then, um, as they were taking measurements, they lost, uh, I should have turned this into centimeters, uh, but they lost uh, sizable amounts in areas that, uh, that are key indicators of weight loss. So these are uh, the results that we're getting from our preliminary study. We started our, our, our long-term study that we're actually going to track our participants over the course of a year. So not only will we know what happens during the 90 days, but we'll know what happens after the 90 days. Uh, so that's really, um, that's all I'm going to share with you today. I hope it's enough to spark your interest in what we're doing. 
It's time to get excited for TR90. And uh, come October, you'll have uh, the opportunity to get a hold of some of the uh, TR90 system. You can see we've got four different products here. Um, we've got the AIDSLOCK TR90 Fit, AIDSLOCK TR90 Control, there's a protein shake, and then a product called Jumpstart that really you just take for the first two weeks that helps to kind of set some of the gene expression uh, to set a foundation for the entire program. Well, I want to um, close with this right here. Um, there are one billion starving people on the planet, and as surprising as it is, the problem of obesity is even greater. There's 1.5 billion people who are overweight, and I was actually chatting with Karen about this this morning. What's interesting is these people don't really have a choice, do they? They're not starving because they have a choice so much. But over here, people do have a decision. And the decision making is going to get even more interesting as we introduce TR90 because now we're giving them the opportunity to have the world's first weight management program that is targeting the overweight problem at the genetic level. And that's exciting to be able to cause the body's tissue, tissues to work a little more the way they did when you were younger so you can get some of that youthful metabolism back. So it really helps us bring back into balance what's happening on this planet and you get to be part of that. I see a few hands going up and what I'm going to do is I'll take your questions uh, after the meeting. I'll be here and I'd love to answer more of your questions. But thank you for your time and attention. Just get excited for PR90. <laughs>